This is nowhere near slavery or anything, but you know, it's pressure. What if the people only bid 40 or 50, you know? Who wants to have dinner with the nun? I mean, you know. We do it for the cause, right? Okay, we want to talk about catching on fire. We want to talk about a great blessing that comes to your life when you become awake on some of the really big social issues of the day. Martin Luther King, Gandhi, William Wilberforce, a pastor who had written a book called Practical Christianity in England. Slavery in England, and I've been to Liverpool, one of the big ports where the slaves from Africa and the West Indies were shipped in to go to Virginia, to go to the Carolinas, to go to Georgia. The states today, the 10 southern states that practice slavery are the real practitioners of the death penalty. 80% of all executions happen in the states that were slave states. What does that mean? And when people of color are killed in this country, the death penalty is seldom, if ever, pursued for people of color. That's my conversation with President Obama, who stated, I'm for the death penalty in very restricted cases. Everybody wants their design or death penalty. Very restricted cases where we know the person's guilty. It's been a terribly heinous crime. So the full outrage of the community can be expressed. Well, President Obama, there doesn't ever seem to be outrage when Native American people are killed, when Latinos are killed in LA, when African Americans are killed in New Orleans, 90% of all the murders in New Orleans are African American people. A lot of times black people kill another black people and you can find on a policeman's notebooks, N-O-N, nigger on nigger. If you don't value the life of the person who's been killed, you don't seek the ultimate penalty. Nobody's outraged. How can we ever have thought that we could do this thing? Alaska, a threat came up about 10 years ago. Somebody wanted to be the governor and realized their point of departure where they could contrast themselves with the incumbent was to speak for the death penalty to try to bring it back. And then when you looked at the history of Alaska on the death penalty, it was horrendous. Almost all the people on their death row were Native American people. We don't, we would have to be so pure to think we could play God and decide who among us for which crime is supposed to die. How do we get on this death road anyway? What made us think? But when we talk about catching on fire, the biblical image I always go to is Moses, who had murdered an Egyptian and was in Midian and taken care of the sheep of his brother-in-law, was not doing badly, and sees this doggone bush burning and his curiosity is what got him into all the trouble. So he goes over, let me see what is making the bush burn. <laughs> and here's a voice. It is in the scriptures, we were talking in the religious group today about revelations that are in the Hebrew Testament. First revelation in the book of Exodus of the heart of God is I have heard the cry of my people and Moses, you gotta go. And you gotta be the one. Martin Luther King took that story, heard that call, and he had been offered a professorship. He had gone to a university in the Northeast. He was offered a professorship to teach. And he was about to marry Coretta. And think what their life could have been. A wonderful, smart professor 
in a Northeastern college and they wouldn't have had to go through the Jim Crow stuff. He wouldn't have had to go through the stuff of the firebomb thrown into his house and he comes to Montgomery. And he's just barely there when he has to have a meeting with a couple of his deacons because their sister Rosa Parks refused to go to the back of the bus in Montgomery, Alabama, and she was in jail, and what were they going to do? Maybe they said we could not ride the buses, and they didn't know if they could do that boycott for a weekend. Movements start because principal people who care about a cause get together, small group of us, justice is just us, and begin to say, that's wrong. That's against human dignity, and we have to work to change. William Wilberforce, get this. Britain was making money hand over fist with the slave trade, and it started in the 15th century. They were getting slaves from Africa, they were getting slaves in the West Indies, and they were making money hand over fist with the slave trade. The people in England that looked at the cotton products that they were getting or the sugar cane and the sugar that was coming in never saw the people on the ships. They never saw, if you go to Liverpool, when I went to Liverpool just a couple of years ago, there were two places I wanted to see. And one was Cavern where the Beatles got started. I love the Beatles. <laughs> but the other is the museum they did because Liverpool was the big port where the slaves were brought in and then sent over to Virginia and to Georgia and to South and North Carolina. And the museum is built like a slave ship. It's very, very hard to see. It's very hard to walk in there because you see the places where people were shackled to come over in the boat and how many of them died. It's hard, it's claustrophobic even to walk in there. And to think of people shackled, and to think of people without food or water or health care coming across on that boat, it's just so impossible to even imagine what happened to the human beings and how many of them died and never made the passage. But the people in England weren't seeing the people on the ships. They were so removed from that. And the story is so amazing because the Quakers, God bless the Quakers, 12 little Quakers in Britain said, we're going to form us a committee. 12 on a little committee. And they said, what, how did they state on this pamphlet? Oh, they decided to publish a little pamphlet. Start getting information out to the people, you know what I mean? And they had such information as may tend to the abolition of the slave trade. And they begin to tell the stories of what was happening on the slave ship so you can bring the people close to the suffering. So compassion in the hearts of people can be born. Like, oh my God, this is inhumane. We shouldn't do that. And can you imagine the debate when it happened in Parliament? when it happened that we will stop the slave trade in, in the West Indies on the slave trade? And it's true, when they finally did, and they got Wilberforce to come in because he was a great speaker, to come into that parliament, to come into that parliament, to come into that parliament, and I mean people were going nuts because they said, we are gonna, it's gonna economically bankrupt the British Empire if we stop the slave trade. And when the bill, what, 150 years later, 200 years later, did finally pass, they got the word to William Wilberforce on his deathbed. This touches me, because my mama told me, Helen, honey, you may never see, you know, honey, they may never end this thing in your lifetime. On his deathbed, they came to work to him and said, William, they passed it. And slavery was abolished in England.